Aloha, everybody. We are live, and I am joining live at the same time from my Instagram live. So <laughs> follow me on Shane Austin 10 Instagram. All of you guys follow on Instagram. Hop over to Facebook. The uh, link is in my bio. I'm gonna just set this right here. Just to this is our this is our backstage pass if you're on Instagram. But uh, we're here. We're live. On Aloha Friday, I'm so grateful. Shane Austin here with my co-host, Dave Austin. Real quick, what are you grateful for, Dave? Let's kick hey, things off well, right. First of all, I'm always grateful for Aloha Fridays. And if anybody who follows us on the show, you'll find I'm doing from Michigan. I'm doing from Hawaii. Today, I'm in Salt Lake, Utah. And I'm so grateful that, I mean, God has painted uh, a masterpiece here. The colors are incredible. I mean, I'm just blown away. I, I actually can't even believe that they could be so many different vibrant colors. So I'm just grateful to be here and take it in and see the wonder of what really we have available to us in the, on this planet. Absolutely. Well, I'm grateful for the beautiful weather that we're having out here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Right now is the International Balloon Fiesta, and it is an amazing week for anybody that hasn't experienced it. It's incredible. I'm just driving to the gym, and I see balloons everywhere. It looks like we're under attack, but it's it's really a cool experience. We'll probably go to the Mass Ascension tomorrow morning and uh, check it out. So it, it's really Be sure to wear your Aloha shirt. Bring some Aloha spirit to those uh, ballooners. Hey, but where, where are your lays? Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> this is Aloha Friday. What is Let happening? This, Let me what make this happening? real. Now we're ready. Now, and, and I see wow. you joining us live. We got Billy. Hey, Billy. Happy Friday. Mark, absolute rock star. He's going to be our <laughs> guest um, um, here soon. And um, He is a rock star. Yep. Love Mark. <laughs> so let's just get right into it. Let's start off with the tip of the day. Dave, Coach Dave with the tip of the day. All right. It's going to go really with the theme of the show today is that, all right, so how can you be the best version of you? I mean, what does it take? How do you keep growing and allowing your light to shine brighter so that others can find their own light? The brighter your light of who you are uh, shines, the more not only does it benefit you, but it benefits everyone around you. So the tip of the day is pay attention to how you can be better in everything you do so that your light that's within you shines so brightly that others just, man, they want to be around you. So they find their own light. How's that? Well, energy is contagious and a lot of people try to just go and help others and they're, they're so helpful. But if you're not focusing on yourself first and having, you know, bringing the best version of you, then you can't give yourself fully to everybody else. So really, let your light shine so others can shine. And we're going to talk about that uh, as well. Now, I want to talk about something that I've started on Instagram, trending <laughs> topic. It's world famous already. It's not quite there yet. But the Queek, <laughs> quote of the week, the Queek, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I want to talk about this week. So I want to just share it, but I want to see who knows the author of it. This is the kind of a game we're going to start doing. And the quote of the week, the Queek, is a ship in harbor is safe but that is not what ships are built for. Who wrote that quote? If you, you, you have a, you have a, there we go. Chris is joining in. Aloha. Welcome. We're starting to have people join us live right now. This is exciting. And Mark has said about how awesome our guests are today. I mean, it, they are awesome. We're in for a treat, but keep going. Yeah, we are. Who, who, so, who was that? I love that. By the way, I love that quote. As I introduced this couple, I mean, it's perfect that I use this quote this week because they're living this. They're not just staying in harbor. They're going out and they're <laughs> they're voyaging the open ocean and, and tackling the rough waters. And that's what's so exciting. So if anybody knows who the author of this week's Queek is, put it in. Um, and then I'll give you guys the answer at some point today um, throughout this show. So let's talk about our guest. Aaron and Veronica, it's our first time we've had two guests at the same time, which is exciting. We get to have four people. You get to have four of us today. All of you, <laughs> you get all four of us. And um, there, uh-oh, uh-oh, we already have a, uh, we have an entry in here with a question mark. Ah, that is, that is the author. We already, we already <laughs> have the answer, but there is a question mark in there because there is some other uh, authors that have kind of claimed to say that they've said that, but it's hard to determine who, uh, oh, Ooh, see, we're even more specific. Mark, with Mark. More specific. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's pretty good. You guys are on it already. So Aaron and Veronica, power couple. 
that uh, we've been fortunate enough to be able to work with over the past few years. They're from Vista, California. They've been together now for five and a half years. They're engaged now. So congratulations Woo-hoo! to them. Um, oh, and I let me let me show this engaged couple right here. There we oh, go. Yeah, there they, there are. they are. And um, you know, it, it, by by trade, Aaron started off in in chiropractic work. That's where he began his journey. And now it's it's cool to see where they're transitioning to because. Uh, Veronica, you know, she's a Reiki master and she ha- makes also the most amazing cakes that I've <laughs> ever seen and tasted. She makes, I mean, the craziest shapes. They're beautiful. She's made uh, a crocodile before. I mean, she can make anything that you can really dream up. And um, now that they have come together as this power couple, they've brought in their talents and they're shifting into something really powerful in releasing mental blocks, which is going to be something that we we talk about here throughout the show. So I'll get into that when we bring them in. Um, but I just ask, again, for you guys joining us live, they're with us. We're excited to have you with us. Um, the only thing we ask, we just love to spread this content and, and be able to, to reach everybody. And, and it just helps if you guys share, if you comment, engage. But also, you get the most value out of it is when you engage and you comment with us because that's what makes this show Awesome, as Dave says. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> I'm never going to stop saying awesome because we do have awesome, awesome guests. guests. Well, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's right. I hear an echo. I hope you guys don't. No, but, you're good. All right, good, because it is so awesome that we get a chance to share these people that maybe you've never heard of before. Maybe you have. But you know that have heard of them. You see, like, a, you know, Mark McClough says they are awesome. You know, they are awesome. Uh, and each week we're going to be giving you someone that uh, <laughs> is just, uh, look at the echoes, awesome. That, I love it. Uh, you know, that, that has a philosophy in life that will light your, light your, let your light shine brighter today. So, yeah, let's bring them on. And I appreciate Mark for, for sharing this as well. Uh, you know, Zach last week, he said he shared the video to six of his buddies and five of them joined us live. So that's, that's inspiration. That's awesome right there. So go ahead and, and share this with all of your friends who, uh, you know, who can really learn something from this with you. Um, so speaking of awesome, we have, for those that are our regulars, they know how, how much we say it. Instead of counting it, I think I, I'm going to try something new this time. Just type in below, reply awesome every time you hear us say it. It hasn't started yet, but as soon as you hear us say it, and then we'll go down at the end, we'll count them at the end and uh, just see how many times we actually say it. We'll see which one's the most awesome video we've ever had. It's not about the content that we talk about. It's how many times we say awesome. That's all that matters. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you that have checked the calendar more than once and have been a little nervous for today, it is Friday the 13th. And now that can <laughs> send some shivers down your spine if you're into that superstitions and, and all of that. But um, I just want to ask everybody that's watching right now, comment below. Is Friday the 13th, is it lucky or an unlucky day? I want to just get an idea of what people think about Friday the 13th. So I'm going to pull the audience. Yeah, I, is, it, is it lucky? I got to be honest with you. I gotta be honest. For me, for a lot of my life, I've, I was I was scared on Friday the thirteenth. I know it's just something that did. But then, Kathy, as you know, your mom, my wife, uh, it's a very special day for her. So just being around that, I guess it's all perception, right? So now I look at Friday Friday thirteenth as being kind of cool. But it had took something to change my childhood thoughts of Friday the thirteenth. Well. I could care less about your opinion. I want to hear our guest's opinion. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> let's bring them in and let's get their, their opinion on the matter. All right. We got Aaron and Veronica joining us live. Welcome. Aloha. I see you guys have your Aloha Lays as well. I do. I love it. <laughs> got ready for Aloha Friday. I'm excited about this. So what, what do you, well, Mark says, it is just another day for me. Until now, as I prepare our final revision of taxes and we lost our tax file, so it sucks right now. So right now he's a little unlucky. <laughs> oh, man. What, what are your guys' take on Friday the 13th? Is it a lucky day or is it an unlucky day? You know, I think you know, I, growing up, it always was considered the unlucky day, but it was always an exciting day because you only get it so often throughout the year, but – I think my take on it now is I, I don't like to look at anything as bad luck anymore because the more you focus on bad luck, the more you go to attract that. So I like to look at every day as as a lucky day, as a very positive day. So that's it's like the glass half empty, glass half full. So 
I like to look at it as a positive than a negative. Veronica, I agree. You know that? I agree. Yeah, I agree with him because like he said, if everybody else is focused on the bad, so it's going to be my lucky day because if I stay positive and, and look for the positives in today, then I'm just going to have an awesome day. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you attract whatever kind of luck you want, right? It's what we yeah. put our focus on. We create our own luck to, to be honest, but that's at least my, my perception of it. But, uh, and, and there we go, Kathy, it all comes down to where your focus is. And I love that. I it's, it is your focus determines your reality. And, um, one, one thing that just brings up a funny story is I was watching a special on, on Eli Manning, the year he won the Super Bowl. um, that season, you know, and they beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl or the Patriots. I guess it's <laughs> the New England Tom Brady's. But um, he every game that his wife sat in the stands rather than the press or no, when she sat in the press box, they would lose. And then if she sat in the stands, they would win. So they go. They're playing, I think, Green Bay in um, in um, geez, where, where the heck do they play in, in Green Bay? Yeah. yeah, Wisconsin in a cold freezing. It was one of the coldest playoff games. And they're going into it, and he's, you know, he's not totally superstitious, but he's like, honey, I'll buy you a nice coat, but please could you just sit outside for this game? And he goes on to say, he's like, I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. (laughs) I think we all have a little bit of that going on. I know I had it. But one thing I noticed in my career going in my football journey is I seem to keep hitting bad luck after bad luck. And I realized there was a pattern and it didn't matter if I had a different coach. I just continued to see myself as the backup and it just kept seeing like bad luck. Like is every day, Friday the 13th for me, what is going on? I feel like I'm doing the right things, but it wasn't until we identified that I had some blocks. I had some mental blocks that were sabotaging my success. And actually once I got to work with you guys and identifying those, then I went on to have you know, I haven't looked back since I've been, I've been the starter since every, everywhere I've gone, but there was a block that I had to, to go through. So I want to talk about that, but I just realized I haven't even gotten your guys' gratitudes yet. What are you guys grateful for before we dive into mental blocks? I'm grateful for this beautiful day we have outside. Uh, It's, it's just, it's not too cold, not too hot. Very nice day. (laughs) Awesome. Beautiful. Oh, I just said it. All right, Aaron. (laughs) I think Veronica's ahead of you. Um, I, I'm grateful to be here on this on this interview with you guys live on Aloha Fridays. I've been watching this this show here for since you guys started. I think just a couple. I miss a couple of them, but uh, just being excited to be here and, and to share our knowledge with everybody and and enjoying this energy. And it's gonna be even a more awesome interview than you guys have ever had. <laughs> now, we're gonna be talking about. Uh, you know, blocks, mental blocks. And it's something I don't know anything about. <laughs> I have no, no mental blocks. <laughs> and do you ever come across people who think they don't have any mental blocks? <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are the ones that have the most blocks. <laughs> so, so talk for the people that are watching right now, in, in your guys', uh, since you guys have been now working on that and specially on that, I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, what kind of are mental blocks and what have you guys found? Um, through your guys' research and work? Well, I, I guess I could start with when I started my career, I started as, as a chiropractor, and it was, a, it was a goal that I had to do that. And it took me about 10 years to accomplish that goal right out of high school. And I went to, during my studies, I started learning more about the, the emotional component to health and disease. And I would uh, I studied and trained in different modalities to help with that. And I realized that when I started uh, working, and I, I got a chance to work at a wellness hospital in Rosarito and got to see patients from all over the world dealing with cancer, multiple sclerosis, and all kinds of other autoimmune diseases. And what I found was about 90% of the people that I was seeing, even in my private practice, uh, most of their physical symptoms were being caused by all the stresses and the uh, stuff that was going on in their life, whether it's challenges in their relationships, they were having financial problems, maybe they lost somebody that they really cared about, and mm-hmm. they would hold it all in, and their body started to manifest it into the physical. And so when we started really diving into helping people to release what they were holding on to, which we would consider like a mental block, then for some reason, their physical symptoms started to get better, and they started to heal. And throughout my career, I started doing more of that. And then Veronica and I had teamed up because you know there's things that I'll let her share that she does. 
But then I realized that if I can take that and transfer it into someone's life, because from my own personal story, I won't get too much in the detail, but I found that there were certain things I wasn't uh, truly happy with in my life. Um, at one point I wanted a, a healthy relationship. This is prior to me meeting Veronica. Uh, I wanted a successful career like most entrepreneurs want or most people. Sure. And I was, I wasn't seeing the success that I wanted to. And then I realized that when I started doing my own emotional work, I realized that there was patterns that I was showing up just like you said, Shane. And as I started to release those, not only did I start to feel better physically, like I, my parent patients experience, but things started finally improving my life. And I started to manifest things that I truly wanted, but I had to let go of those mental patterns because it was just based off old patterns, old habits, that I, the program that I've been running since I was young. And because I was holding on to that, it just kept showing up over and over again. And as I can shift that energy and we remove those blocks, then my life started to improve. And I've been able to, again, in the last five years, my life has shifted completely because we've been able to do this on ourselves, but also, what we've been able to do for other people as well. So it's just, it's more of a deep subconscious uh, program that goes on that people are unaware of most of the time. And if we can identify that, and that's what we help people to do, then we can help them to start to create the life that they want. And, and yeah. I want to just give you a quick testimonial. That's all right. Cause you know, Shane talked about being backup and now he's the starter wherever he goes. I know when I worked with you, you took me back and found a place in fourth grade. You know, <laughs> I started crying. You know, it's like, OK, I've been holding on this forever, you know, and all of a sudden I, I'm crying like a baby because I realized that, you know, my dad, you know, was in the military. So we moved every two or three years. And when we moved to, to Fullerton, California, it was um, where our house wasn't ready yet. So I was in another district and took the junior high bus and it was agreed with the teachers and the that, that I could be there half hour late because I just come on the bus. So I would come in a half hour late. Now this is a fourth grade. I'd come in and they're already going. So I just felt like, I don't even know what they're talking about. So I shut down and wouldn't even pay attention. And then I overheard uh, other kids say that new student, he's really dumb. He doesn't even know what time school starts. So I was <laughs> been holding this, this in me, this part that some part in me that is blocking me because I'm thinking, well, then, you you know, because I was good in sports, they had this term, a dumb jock. <laughs> and so I just, well, I guess I'm a dumb jock. And so <laughs> I held that on for a long time. I mean, I released a lot of it, but you were able to bring it out to so that there could even be a newer, better version of me, that it was time for me to, to release that completely. But it hadn't something I even thought about. That I think that's why you would call it a block. It's not something I, I, I would think about, but that yet it's somewhere in me. It's like, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And then you guys did that. And then you go through a process to release that. And I think yeah. that's awesome. And oh, awesome. <laughs> it can be hard to identify too, because I thought I was doing the right things. I thought I was mentally strong, but I just kept having those same paradigms, those same patterns show up. But I want to hear, I want to hear a little bit from Veronica too, because she's so intuitive and the way that you guys work together is unbelievable in uncovering uh, mental blocks. But I mean, do you have any, uh, anything you want to add to just the idea of, of mental blocks and, and how you can, I guess, uncover them? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, for me being a spiritual intuitive, I, I can feel people's energy. I can feel, uh, what the deep emotion is. And a lot of times people have issues expressing emotion, mm. especially men, you know, they're taught, you know, don't cry and they just <laughs> stuff it. Well, we got to be tough, it. right? We got to be tough. We can't show any weakness. Yeah. yeah. So I'll feel the emotion when it's coming up. And then when they're trying to hide it, I just feel it like it goes down. So then I'll let them know. I go, they're, they're stuffing their emotions. So then we dig a little deeper. And I would say probably more than 90% of the people we work with start to cry, including the men. And it, it's yeah. just something that they can't hold back because the emotions have been trapped for so long. And finally, when we really break through those barriers, they, they just start bawling. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, have I have a new tip of the day. I have a new tip of the day. I have a new tip of the day. Oh, we're going to now from you. Don't go and work with these folks because you'll cry like a baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really healing. It's actually awesome. <laughs> Well, allow yourself to do that. I want to add to that because I've seen them work. They've worked on me. And then our guest last week, uh, Mark, uh, Mark, geez, I almost said McCullough because he's commenting. Uh, but Mark Haddis, 
you know, he had his challenges and, and you guys identified a block in him even at conception, which was unbelievable. But the thing that I really clicked for me, it's like, okay, how do they know when he's getting to these points? Where are you finding him? He had his eyes closed and you guys were going through your process and Jennifer's coming in saying, awesome. I love it. Hey, Jen. And, um, you guys are going through your process with him and his eyes are closed. And as you guys, you guys were like, I don't know if it was a thumbs up or whatever, but you guys found at the same time, Mark, like just intuitively, he's like, yep, right there. But he didn't say it. And you guys weren't looking at him, but some just clicked at the exact same time. I'm like, wow, they are really on the same page right now. And it was just, it's just amazing. Every time I, I get blown away every time. So for those of you guys who are just joining in with us, uh, I just want to, you know, we're talking about mental blocks and, and how sometimes we don't even know that they're there. I didn't know that they were there, and um, but they're very powerful. I just want to know from from the people watching right now, if if you know you have a mental block or if you don't know you have a mental block um, or if you've ever experienced anything like that, put an exclamation mark if you know you have one and you just want to release it. Uh, <laughs> put a question mark if you have no idea, if you're completely – uh, oblivious to the fact that maybe there's mental blocks out there or shoot, you can just put them both. If you're like, I, I know I have some, I know there's probably plenty that I don't have. Uh, be bold right now. It's okay to just completely let down your walls and, 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 and express with all of us because we, when we identify them, then we can move through them. And we just lost Dave. He must have a mental block with this topic. <laughs> He's crying right now in the background. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah. I want to just, it's a simple uh, comment. A question mark or a uh, exclamation mark. Hopefully, Dave joins us now because now you guys it did cut you guys back in. Zach, right there, he's got a t <laughs> he's got exclamation marks, question marks all over the place. Zach is one of those open and and transparent people. You know, he's an amazing uh, guy, and we're actually we're gonna have him on the show. I feel like everybody commenting. We're gonna have Jen. We gotta have you on the show uh, one of these times um, because you're so awesome. Um, okay, so. Now I want to talk about I want to talk about again we're, we've been talking about the work that you guys are are moving into and I'm gonna do something like this no I'm gonna do this to make you guys full screen make myself smaller there we go now I can see you guys and um, let's see what Mark has to say here can they go into mental blocks and how they manifest or show up in our lives mine was a physical pain but for those with a blind spot what would make us say I am curious about whether or not I have a mental block how do you guys want to tackle that? Great question. The way we look at it, mental blocks show up because again, they are unconscious. Most people don't even know they have anything. But the way I, at least I do it for myself is if I find that I have a goal or something that I'm striving for and it just doesn't seem like it's happening the way I want it to or it's happening quick enough, whether it's you're looking to like, let's say if we want to improve our relationships, if it's a financial goal and it's just, it just seems like one thing keeps happening after the next. And it's just, and it, you start to feel a lot of emotion around that, whether it's you're getting frustrated, um, you know, maybe some sadness shows up with that, uh, maybe a lot of indecision and all, just your nerves get, get, get in the way. Sure. And what we tend to find is that that's usually a sign that there's a block, there's something deeply subconscious that's stopping you from doing that because really it's all about emotions, like Veronica mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. And that's what, what happens with the blocks. As we are going to step into a new realm, let's say if you're going to you're, you're going into a growth phase, you want to do something new. Uh, a lot of your stuff is going to come up because that's where a lot of your insecurities are going to start to show up. We talk, you guys talk a lot about getting out of your comfort zone, and a lot of fears will show up because, like Dave had mentioned earlier, you know something shows up and someone said if there, there's a fear that I don't want to look dumb or I don't want to look stupid mm -hmm. or. For some people, it could also be, well, I don't want to fail. That's a big one we find. And oh, whatever yeah. failure means to that person, then that's going to show up down to the physiological level. Your whole chemistry is actually going to change as if you're going about to re-experience that same event again. And it's usually from an experience or a perceived experience. And so that will show up and manifest itself again and again. So that's a long answer to the question. Oh. So I hope that <clears throat> I hope that helps with you, Mark. Yeah. Speaking of Mark, here he is. Aaron and Veronica are amazing and I couldn't agree more. So I do want to talk about, cause this is so powerful and, and Dave is, is in and out with us. I think he's trying to connect right now. I see him in the lobby. We're going to try to try to bring him back in. If not, we don't need him. <laughs> there he is. Can you hear us, Dave? Are you I back with nothing. us? You hear nothing. Okay. Do you well, hear me? just sit there and meditate with us. 
Uh, <laughs> I have a block that I'm dealing with, I guess. Yeah. You have, you have a very strong block. Just give us Turn thumbs it up, up so I can hear. Wave. Um, but I want to talk. Okay, going back to uh, Aaron and Veronica. So your past work, you know, you worked in the chiropractic industry, delayed. but you're transitioning now, and you guys are really. I don't want to say I don't want to say closing a door to open another, but you guys are transitioning into something where you can truly let your light shine because that's you know the title of this is. Yeah so that you can touch and affect, positively affect more people. So can you tell me a little bit of what that transition is like for you guys? Well, you know, starting something new, it's, it is bringing up, you know, our stuff. So we're <laughs> constantly working on each other. And it's, if you don't make that next step, you're just going to be stuck in, you know, in the same spot as before. I'm just going to enjoy the show, I guess. <laughs> Hey, shut up, Dave. We're trying to listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's we're really making a bold move by stepping out and doing what we truly love, because if we don't make that change, we're, we're just going to be stuck in the same spot and we're never going to know what it's like to be doing what we love. And I think a lot of people settle for a paycheck or just, um, you know, any job that's just bringing money, but they're not truly happy. And that's where they're stuck where they're at and they find themselves unhappy or complaining every time they have to go to work. So that's why we're making this bold move and stepping into our greatness and letting our, our light shine. Yeah. And it's beautiful. You guys have the beautiful home office background. Uh, you guys are, are, are looking great there and you guys truly are, are shining, but you know, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I, I would have to, um, I guess, guess, it's got to be a little uh, fearful, a little intimidating. You guys are taking a leap, just like the quote of the week, the queek. You, know, you guys are now, you're not in harbor. You guys are voyaging the open seas to truly um, follow your passion. I mean, what is that like? Is there some nerves just to, to reach out, to jump out? Because right now we don't know the unknown. We don't know the results yet, but you guys are putting yourself in position for that. Yeah, it, at the beginning, it will be, your nerves are going to start to show up because, you know, you're at, in the moment, again, when your emotions start to kick in, the worries, the fears, the what ifs will yeah. will come in. And if if you really haven't worked through releasing a lot of these blocks like we have, then it, it it'll kick in. And depending on how long it stays there, and it's usually in those moments when the nerves, the fears, the worries, the anger start to show up. That's when most people will tend to give up because they can't handle it. And it really is hard for people to handle when those emotions show up. And and unless it's something that they're very passionate about, then mm -hmm. it's very easy for people to give up when the first challenge starts to show up. And so yeah. what we've been fortunate to have is just our work that we do when that happens. OK, and this will go back to uh, Mark's question from earlier is, OK, something is showing up for me. It's, it's creating an awareness. OK, I'm feeling this way and there's a reason why. And if I can di dig deep into understanding why am I feeling this way, you can ask those questions. And why well, I feel this way because of X. Okay, well, why would that be so hard for me? Or why would that bother me so much? And then you can really dig down deep into really why, what's what's showing up for you. And it could be a fear that, okay, well, what if I fail? And if it's a failure issue for some people, it's again, what does failure mean to you? And why is that so bad? And you can bring it back down to when it all started. But when in the first moment when we, when we shifted, and we didn't really like shift. We were already doing this work, but we yeah, yeah. it's we were doing a, the transition from having one practice in business and then building this one up as we had our clients coming in. And we realized that in order for us to work together and do what we really love and want to do, we had to close that door because we knew there was an energy to that that we had to detach mm -hmm. from because it was we felt like it was going to slow us down even more. And as we closed that, it seems like everything's been going so much faster, but what I love about it is if you can shift your mentality into this is a growth phase and in all growth, there's going to be some resistance. And this is our opportunity to grow because there's going to be something within us that we've never seen before. That's going to start to shine. And this yeah, is the moment yeah. where if I can move past this, we're going to grow even further and everything's going to get better and better and better. But most people stay in their comfort zone and never grow. And that's what creates dissatisfaction. Mm. And that's and exactly that's, the, the quick. And I, and I love it what you're, well, you're I'm, describing. I'm, I'm starting, starting to, 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 to wonder where that's, where that's but um 
hopefully, hopefully that just subsides. But I, I would just want to say that you guys are are really practicing what you preach, and and I and you guys are asking, you know, the right. It's all about asking the right question. I had to ask, you know, why is it serving? What is it serving me to be the backup? What is that? That's you know, why is that important to me? And um, you know, maybe it was. It was the fear of, of having the pressure or, or, you know, finding my own comfort zone within, okay, well, I'm good off the bench, but if I'm the starter and the guy that they're relying on day in and day out, oh, then that's a whole new challenge. And maybe that was something that held me back, but I had to ask the question. You guys helped me find that, that question. But going back to you guys are practicing what you preach. You guys are taking bold action. You guys are, are doing the necessary steps. A lot of people, um, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, that's a great idea. I think that that would be awesome. Someday, maybe I will do it. But you guys are like, nope, we're doing it. We are just committing to it. We might not even know exactly all the answers, but it's just like Martin Luther King says, uh, faith is taking that first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. So I hope that just goes to show for everybody here, you're getting another tip of the day is take action, take bold action in anything that you guys are, are pursuing. And you guys are living examples, and I'm, I'm excited to uh, just be a part of this journey as you guys are, are taking action together. So you guys are truly letting your light shine. So that was the tip of the day, letting your light shine. I wanted you guys to talk about that a little bit because I know within your guys' um, program, that's really a theme, I think, for you guys. Um, talk about that for a second, letting your light shine. What does that mean? Um, Shane, I, w- I wanted to elaborate a little more on that. Um, when I was yeah. younger um, – I, I didn't really allow my light to shine because I had a lot of fear, especially with my with my dad. I was fearful of him. Uh, you know, the, I won't go deep into the story, but um, I felt like I couldn't speak out and and like I I wanted to hide most of the time because mm-hmm. I was afraid of, you know, of of the repercussions and. So I, I constantly just stayed quiet. Even during school, I I was always quiet. I was a quiet, shy girl. And I felt like I didn't have a lot of friends, even though there was probably kids there that, you know, that would play with me. But I, I always felt different than all the other kids. And I would watch them play and everybody was very expressive. But I didn't have that excitement that most kids had. And I just felt like all my emotions were just... Uh, hidden or blocked. And I think with the work that we're doing, it's really helped me to to truly be who who I am and let allowing my light to shine because as a kid I didn't I didn't get to do that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I I missed out on a lot of things because I didn't speak up or um, if there was something I you know I wanted or wanted to do, I felt like like I didn't really have that chance to do it because of my insecurities or my shyness. It, it just stopped me. So now that I've worked on myself and cleared a, a lot of stuff and I, I feel like I'm really stepping into something greater, something more powerful that I know is there and I'm allowing my light to shine. And with me being very intuitive and being able to feel people and their energy, I'm helping them to allow their light to shine. And I, this is what I teach my daughter because she, you know, she's in elementary, she's 10 years old and I teach her just be yourself, you know, be, be happy with, you know, with who you are. Don't try to be like somebody else, just be yourself and uh, don't be afraid of what people think about you. And I, I was always afraid of what people thought about me. And so I, you know, I would try to stay hidden but yeah. I, you know, I, I've come a long way from, you know, from childhood. I, I couldn't even look at people in the eyes. It was that bad. Wow. <laughs> well, that's it's so beautiful. And I hope everybody watching right now is just taking notes because this is some unbelievable stuff because we truly, we all do have our own light. We all have a light within us. And some of us, maybe because of mental blocks, we choose to, to hide that light, maybe under a basket or something. But as Veronica talks about how now she's stepping into her light now, it's unconsciously giving permission to everybody else around her to let their light shine. It's an energy that can spread and it's contagious. And that's so beautiful that once we let you know our light shine, we can allow other people to, to let their light shine as well. And we can really, we can light up the world together uh, when we let that light shine. So anybody right now watching, you're ready to let your light shine. Just, just type in shine. I just want, I want to hear it here. I'm going to write it up here. 
shine is the word I want to see. If people are ready to, to let our lights shine together, uh, just write in that word shine. And I'm going to see if Dave can now hear us. I'm going to unmute you. Are you there, Dave? Can you hear us? He can't hear us. So I'm going <laughs> so to have to do the final four today all by myself. Usually we can tag team this, but um, we'll get right into the final four questions that we ask each one of our guests so that we can, hey, Silvika, superstars, thank you. You're a superstar yourself. Um, let's see. We got Mark Hattis. He's ready to shine. He's already shining. We got Karen. Karen is coming in. Veronica and Dr. Aaron are incredible. Hashtag power couple and beyond. I love that hashtag. <laughs> Zach is shining his light. Everybody is shining today. Do you see how that spreads, how the energy spreads? I love it. Let's continue to shine and keep it going. So without further ado, let's get into the final four. And I'm going to have to do this myself now, Dave. You just get a watch. <laughs> Unless, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. That's a... <laughs> That's a no. I think that's a no. So I'll just I'll just go and ask it to both of you guys. Growing up, what was your guys? Who maybe was your biggest influence or maybe role model? I think uh, we were thinking about this, and I can't pinpoint one specific person who was my role model. Um, I, I think kind of what Veronica mentioned. I, I was the kind of person who always wanted to do what everybody else was doing. And so I, I, I can relate that I didn't let my light shine. So I don't, I don't think I had one specific person that I can rec I can say right now, because if I look back at it, uh, if, if I had one, I probably would change it because everything has changed in my life. And so uh, that's, that was always a tough one for me to answer. So if, if anybody would be, you know, I, I think I had looked up to my dad. I know that's been a common answer uh, for most people on your show. Well, how about right uh, now? Anybody uh, right now, yeah. honestly, with everything that's shifted in my life, I would look at, you know, one of the person that's been a big influence on me in the last couple of years has been the work of Paramahansa Yogananda and oh, the wow. work that, that he's put out into this world and sh shining his life for someone who was in the 1920s who brought the teachings of yoga and meditation to the West and also in the time of racism, he was an Indian. And to bring that from the West, barely knowing any English, came to the West to teach, to teach his work. And if you look at it today, he's got they got temples and following thousands and millions of people all over the world. And he's still continuing. And they said that you know, Steve Jobs was said to his 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 book, the Yogananda's book, the autobiography of a yogi is said to be the one book that Steve Jobs had on his iPad. Wow. That was a big influence a lot of people. So wow. I would say he's a big uh, role model for me right now and, and Veronica. And we're studying a lot of his work. That's awesome. Um, and just Say his name one more time slowly because I want the listeners, without using Google, no cheating, I want you to see if you can spell his name correctly. Put it in the comments below his name. Say it one more time. Paramahansa Yogananda. <laughs> He's actually sitting right above Veronica's head right here. Right. Oh, right no, there. that's cheating. No, I, I can't. It's too small for me. So I was right not there. close to spelling that right. Um, so, same question to Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, look at Mark. That's yeah. actually perfect spelling. <laughs> you can go and Google it now because that's exactly how it works. All right, so Veronica, the language clean, Mark. There you go. <laughs> Mark got it. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's that's impressive. That's a lot of uh, vowels. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to you, Veronica. Same question. Biggest influence. So for me, I. I would say I, I didn't really have a role model either. My, like my dad, he was very strict. Um, you know, there was some abuse there, physical abuse, like, you know, towards my mom, towards us, but he wasn't always that way. And because I know he had a lot of blocks and this, you know, his childhood, you know, it's not an excuse, but um, I, looking back now, I could see, why he did the things he did and he just held on to a lot of anger uh and then for my mom i she wasn't really my role model either because i didn't want to be like her i didn't want to mm. fall into her shoes and and a lot of people do tend to you know to do that especially being raised in that environment i but with my near-death experience when i was two and three years old i think i saw things differently and 
everybody to me was the same, whether they were white, black, Asian, it didn't matter. They, everybody was the same, but, and also, I guess, um, successful people, like if you have a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of money, it didn't really matter because everybody's the same. Everybody has the same light within us. So it, I just, I just wanted to be myself, but yeah. I, I didn't allow that to happen, but I knew, I knew there was something there, but I, I just didn't know how to express it. So like Aaron said, I didn't really have a role model, but the Yogananda has been, um, has taught me a lot through his books and, um, all his teachings. And, and I, you know, I would say he's my role model. Okay, perfect. Well, I mean, and, and you can use, I guess you're using role models to show, um, you know, not what not to do, but instead <clears throat> of looking at, you know, you, you learn from maybe other people's mistakes and that can be a powerful thing too. And I'm trying to show right now, it's not letting me show the comments, but Mark spelled it. Um, I, I'm going to assume it's correct, but I can't show it to everybody right now. And since I can't show my titles right now, we are on the final four, the questions that we ask every guest each time. And Dave, for some of you know, he can't hear us right now. He's having some technical difficulties. So he's just sitting there right now, just pretending he's listening. He's a, <laughs> we can just wave to him, but he has no idea what we're saying. He'll, he'll watch the replay. So I encourage everybody else to watch the replay as well. <laughs> but um, let's get to question number two. Now, knowing what you know now, if you could go back, which we can't, but if you could, what would you tell your younger self? I would tell my younger self to just be you, have fun, and do what you love. Wow, that's beautiful, and it's going exactly. Oh, oh, Kathy's saying that he can hear us. Uh oh, I'm talking smack behind his back, but I guess he can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that you're telling your younger self what you're preaching now. I mean, it's what you, you guys, is, your work is now. So, Aaron, same question. That's the thing when we, you got the power couple here because most of our answers are always the same. And um, you guys are one, really. It's, we it's, we are one, and we're all one. And so yeah. it, it's similar, but in my own way is again. I mentioned earlier, I, I always was trying to be like somebody else and never really did what I want, and that stopped me so much from doing truly what it is that I wanted to do. And there's a there was a lot of discontent and unhappiness uh, that I had. And I would I would go back and tell myself, you know, just be exactly who you want to be and don't let anybody else tell you what who who you are, what you should do. You know, dress, if you want to dress a certain way, dress the way you want to want, do the things you want to do, play the sports you want to play and don't do it for everybody else. Do it for yourself. And that's what I would say. And when you can do it for yourself, that's when you're truly going to be happy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's beautiful right there. That's awesome. And as Helen says, since I can't put up the comments, which I love doing, she says beautiful, gives a thumbs up. Um, that's awesome. So now let's let's transition to number three. What do you guys do for fun outside of your brilliant work? Uh, any hobbies? Anything you guys like to do for fun? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, you guys are just workaholics. Eh? You're reading every one of those books behind you on repeat, right? <laughs> Uh, I think this could probably be for the both of us is a couple of things. We really love getting out into nature, you know, especially yeah. we both really developed our, in, our intuition a lot. And like, like Veronica mentioned earlier, we can really feel a lot of people's energy. So sometimes it's good for us to, to get out. One of our favorite places to go to is, is Sedona in Arizona because mm -hmm. the energy in there is just so pure. And it's like a place where we can go to reconnect and recharge. And when we're in a good mental state, a good vibration, then that allows us to be to be better ourselves, but also to bring great work out into our clients. So I would say going out into nature is one of those hobbies. And then uh, two would be, uh, as you can see in the background, we, we really love reading and studying and growing because in most of our books, our novels or everything is to help us improve in ourselves and also taking the works of others who have succeeded and learning from their lessons. And so uh, we really enjoy uh, spending our time in the morning to to read something like I mentioned earlier, we're, we're reading a lot of the Yogananda's work. So we'll read a lot of his work uh, in the morning every single day just to keep ourselves fresh and learn new things to help us live the life that we're here to live. Oh, that's awesome. And would you, uh, since you guys are one, Veronica, would you have anything new or is the same, same well, hobby? Same one? Yeah, well, I, I do like hiking and I, I also like creating things. Um, I could you know, I always have like a solution to, to problems or how do we do this? And 
yeah. I could just make it. Uh, like our old office, I, I put down the floor. It was like these wooden oh, nice. uh, linoleum panels and, <laughs> and I installed it. So it, I did it once before and I just remember and I could see things, how they're done. And it, it just, I don't know, I just get the download and how to do it. Just like with the cakes um, oh, yeah. that I, I don't even know. I couldn't really explain to you how I do it sometimes, but someone shows me a picture and I, you know, I'll say, yeah, I could do that. I can't really explain how in the moment, but then uh, it just gets created and um, I could see the finished product and I just create it. So I, it, I'm, a, it. I'm a good, uh, I, I can create a lot. <laughs> That's You're going to be um, uh, creating your daughter's Halloween costume, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done with that now. Oh, nice. Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to post it. We'll have to see it because I'm, I'm excited. You're, you're so creative that you can create it any way you want. Um, I want to touch on the books behind you guys, though, because I love that you said that that's something that you guys love um, doing because it really it's it's amazing. The education. We're never done learning. And I love books. Something I'm going to start doing on Instagram is I'm going to do a book of the month that I just enjoy or that I resonate with. So I would love to get recommendations from you guys so I can add to my book list. I do a lot more audiobooks now because I listen to it while I'm driving or when I'm working out or something like that. But there's still just something magical about a good book. If anybody else watching right now loves a good book, loves to expand their mind, just type in book so we can all we can all get those book recommendations. And I'll be posting those once a month um, for the books that I, I've really enjoyed. So thank you for that. Last question of the final four. What is the biggest life lesson that you've learned throughout your profession or, or throughout your journey? Maybe, you know, however you guys want to take that. What's, what's, if you could wrap it up, what's the biggest life lesson? Hmm. That's good. That's a good last question. Yeah. It's, it's a tough one. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's just going to go to the same uh, core answer and the theme to our show today is, is, is just be you and let your light and let your light shine. You know, when, if you can be authentic, and be yourself. Uh, people tend to gravitate towards that, and I feel like most people feel that they're going to seem weird or different. But if you look at it, the ones that are different are the ones that really make a change in the world. And that's one of Steve Jobs' quote too: "Is like the, yeah. the one, it's the ones that are the, that are considered crazy or the weird ones are actually the ones that change the world." And so it's like be different and be authentic, be bold, be you. Jeez, beautiful, awesome. <laughs> Veronica? Yeah, for me too, I, I'd say really do what you love because if, if you're not, you know, you only have one, well, you, you might have more than one life after this one, but, um, <laughs> you know, in this life, do what you love and just have fun with it because, you know, what life is meant to have, you know, it's meant to, to be fun, do fun things, and why not get paid to do something you love to do? Why Why settle for a nine to five job that you don't, you don't like, or you don't enjoy, you know, really do something bold and, you know, creative and just do what you love. Enjoy I love it. it. This last question somehow always takes us full circle into the main <laughs> theme of the, of the thing. And you guys are doing what you love you guys, but are taking bold action. Go do it. So I want to remind everybody it takes action. It takes, it takes courage to go and do bold action so that you can do what you love instead of, you know, maybe you can escape the rat race of the, the nine to five jobs or whatever that is. Maybe you enjoy your work. Maybe it's something that you want to do on the side, but you guys are, are bold. You guys are brave and you guys are taking action and changing lives. So that way that everybody else can inspire and let their light shine from within. And Karen says, Aaron, yes. Hashtag Nobo. For those that don't know Nobo, that's our flying fish within our Be a Beast uh, program, which Kathy shows. We do have a book. Yes, it's a little self-serving. But um, the Be a Beast Nobo is no box, no boundaries. You don't have to limit yourself. It's not thinking outside of the box. It's There's no box. And you guys are truly Nobo creative thinking and um, and I love it. So with that, let's wrap it up. Let's where can people find you if they want to get connected with you and, and really explore the work that you guys do? What, where can people find you? Well, right, as of right now, people can find us through our, our Facebook page, which is Facebook dot com uh, forward slash clear connect and connect is spelled K-I-N-E-C-T. 
And if you just go to that page, like us, we're going to be doing our own uh, shows here in the near future, probably st starting next week or in two weeks. And oh, so nice. go and like that so you can follow us and see what we're up to, what we're doing. And that would be a great way to start with us. But also you can go to clearconnect.com. We're revamping our website right now. So you'll see a lot of good content. We're in the process of also creating new programs for everybody. So you have different tastes of what it is that we do. Oh, I love that. And Helen says the circle of life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you guys could just maybe in the comments when we're done here, just put in yeah. those links so people can easily just click it um, because it's, it's just beautiful what you guys do. And you guys can kind of work virtually, right? They don't have to physically be there, do they? No. No, we, virtually. We'll nah, do just like we're doing right now. And we'll, we'll, we go through question and answer, just figure out where does somebody want to make big changes in your life? You know, if there's something that you're unhappy with, you want to get, take some bold action as well. There's something that you really are desiring to do, but don't know how to do that. But and you're feeling that resistance with that. That's what we want to help people with is help them to make those big changes in their life and also and, and guide them when those blocks come up, when that resistance shows up, because if we can push through that, you can do anything. Yeah. And um, just one thing that I think is so cool also that you guys are certified extreme focus coaches. And, you know, as uh, we're, we're coaches, me and Dave, um, and we have a lot of clients that sometimes we'll just send to you guys because we're like, OK, release these blocks for us and then we can help <laughs> replace them with our, our, our animal triggers, our mental triggers to help put them back into right action. But now that you guys are certified coaches. You guys are the full package. You can release those blocks and then replace them with with triggers that can support you moving forward, which is so cool. So we're, we're grateful to have you a part of the team. Um, yeah. But if everybody watching, you want to get face to face with these guys, reach out, look, uh, look them up, clear connect. It's an amazing thing. I want to just quick recap um, for those that maybe are just joining now, go back, watch the replay. Oh, now my titles are working at the very end. Um, <laughs> but go back, watch the replay. Check this out. Um, it, it was amazing content today. We talked about mental blocks and how we can uncover those and, and how they really sabotage us without us maybe even knowing. Uh, we really talked about following our passion by taking bold action, which you guys are practicing what you preach. You guys are living out the queek. And for anybody who needs to look back at what the queek was, um, they are ships sailing the sea, which is beautiful. And now they're letting their light shine. So that way they can let everybody else shine. And we've seen from the comments, a lot of people are typing in shine because they also want to shine and, and let that spread throughout the world. And, and again, it's a, it's an abundant world we live in. I say it every week, but let's all shine together in that abundance. And um, last but not least, find them clear connect with a K on the connect uh, K I N E C T. And um, geez, that was it. Any, any final thoughts? I mean, I just feel like this is an amazing show. <laughs> I, I think that was great. Anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I, I wanted to add for anyone uh, watching, if you guys want to do like a, a free 20 minute coaching session, we'll, we'll discover what your blocks are. We won't work on it, but we'll at least let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dave raises his hand. I'm raising my hand. Can I get a free 20 minutes? <laughs> so, yeah. Everybody has them. We, we all have them and they always show up, especially as you start to transition and grow into new phases, new stuff will show up. But the more you work on it, the, the better you become as a person because then you, your, your light will shine brighter. And if you can open up whatever's holding that back and then you, you can do great things in this world. Yeah. And you can allow your greatest gifts to truly shine. So let's all shine together. Thank you. You guys are awesome guests. Uh, first time we've had four people all at once, which is, I think it's powerful. The more the merrier, right? Yeah. Uh, so thank you all for, for tuning in live with us. Uh, if you're checking out the replay, if you want to check out other replays, go back. You can go back into my videos on my Facebook page or go to YouTube. And um, we have Extreme Focus TV is our channel. You can find the Aloha Fridays playlist and you can catch up on all these great guests that we've been having throughout. And again, if you want to be notified whenever we go live so you don't miss an episode, you can turn on the notifications up. I think in the top right of this, there's three dots. You can turn on notifications. If you're on your phone, I think it's at the beginning, you can turn on notifications. I always post something on Wednesdays and it says add reminder. You can just click that. Make sure you're live with us because it's great. It's fun to engage with you. As you see, everybody's shining when they're, when they're engaging with us. And it's a great energy to be in. Dave, you know, who, who is <laughs> muted today for whatever reason, some technical difficulties. He has a Facebook Live on Mondays. If you follow him on his page, you can start off the week strong and finish strong with us 
here at Aloha Friday. So with that, mahalo to everybody with us. Mahalo to our guests. Thank you, guys. And uh, uh, thank, aloha. You. Right, thank you. Aloha, everybody. Aloha, Dave. Maybe next aloha, week. Dave. We'll <laughs>